what, what are what are some of the challenges that you face? You know, you you you've gone expanded. You see that. You know, what are the, some of the uh, challenges that you face as you're scaling up and you look to sort of expand outside? So I think everyone on the panel made a lot of valid points, such in saying that you know you do need uh, a lot of support in order to scale up and grow. And fortunately, you know, with uh, we we did have uh, a private equity investor from New York come and invest in us uh, about two years ago. Uh, like such, and we also started an on-demand um, uh, app called MyGlam, which is operational in Bombay and in Bangalore, uh, in Bombay and Pune. Soon to start in uh, Delhi and uh, other parts of the country. And you know, as far as scalability is concerned, what's worked for us to uh, you know have 56 locations uh, uh, signed up uh, is, I think. Three things. One is your business model. You are, you offer an attractive business model uh, that's uh, that that you know provides some value financially and in terms of a, a brand and positioning and uh, perception perspective. Then your partner is extremely keen to partner with you. Now, as far as we're concerned, we have an owner operator model, as I mentioned, where the attraction to the owner is is that we're coming in and we're taking over all operational costs from them. Uh, as far as managing locations across different parts of uh, the country is concerned, you know. As long as you've focused on what market you want to enter into, uh, with us it's purely luxury. So as far as we're concerned, you know, regardless of whether it's in it's in a desert or a airport or a, a, a or a beach or a city hotel or a city uh, real estate development, as long as uh, uh, you know there's there enough catchment areas and there's enough opportunity for someone to come in and want to spend you know a a a, a, a reasonable amount of money for a luxury experience uh, uh, which which they would get at a five star hotel now at a slightly cheaper price and with a brand that they all recognize that's helped us expand and uh, you know as far as managing operations uh, in different parts of the country as I said, we run our own training academy. So I, the, the other point of attraction for a hotel owner or a partner is that, you know, I mean, it's tough to run salons and spas. A staff, they can get up and leave within a week. They can get up, they may not show up to work, etc. So, I mean, our advantage here is, is that because we have our own training academies, within 12 to 24 hours, depending on where the location is, where manpower is missing, you know, we always have spa, uh, uh, spa staff or salon staff ready to replace them. You know, that kind of maintains the credibility of the brand, us as an operator. And you know that 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 kind of enables uh, partners and developers, etc., in different parts of the world. You know to 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 be confident when they're partnering right. with us. Right, right, that's great. So you're saying with a with a with a partnering model that is uh, clearly something that you have a value proposition that can stretch across. Yes. And that is uh, where it's focused and built. Uh, do you do you see that? You know, do you do you see a significant, uh, let's say, portion of business coming uh, from products? Do you see that products will be a large part? Do you see it as so uh, it services largely? And uh, as it builds. So in India, pro retail constitutes at least for us at uh, you know uh, uh, at our spas and salons. Uh, at least at our spas, retail constitutes about five percent. It's slightly higher at a salon. But you know, again, this differentiates uh, th this number differentiates uh, uh, globally. In in the Middle East, uh, retail constitutes fifteen to twenty percent. In 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 the U.S., uh, between twenty-five to thirty percent. So, right. But yeah, in India, it's it's, it's about five percent. But do you, do you see that driving differently? Are you seeing, you know, uh, do you see the products business uh, being built? Uh, you know, do you see the products business getting built uh, much faster in India? Is it is it sort of necessary for scale and building behind? Do you see, or is it largely continuing to be the services business that you see? Definitely. I mean, there is a lot of potential for the product uh, business because you know the way the industry is growing at a rate of you know 17 to 30 percent year on year. We see, you know, the consumables being, you know, of course, in a salon, the uh, uh, use of the consumable products and equipments is rising with time. Uh, but of course, um, you know, when we talk about technology and logistics here, uh, for making those products available in the tier two, tier three cities, uh, wherein, you know, a uh, uh, lot of steps have been taken by the government with the Digital, Digital India uh, initiative as well. Uh, wherein you know 20,000 crore rupees has been pumped in for you know uh, internet coverage. Uh, Vodafone is here with 4G. Uh, Reliance Geo is coming up. So with technology, with the internet connectivity uh, and the government initiative, definitely we are able to cater the tier two, tier three cities. Uh, the you know uh, I would say the numbers, the stats are amazing. Wherein it is mentioned that 350 million e-tailing shipments would be delivered to the uh, you know tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, which actually contributes to 50% of the gdp uh, the small towns um, 
12% of the world's population is in the you know, small town. So the focus is to make those products available in the tier two and tier three cities in India. Uh, it is a challenge still. Uh, you know, uh, we see the valuations of the e-commerce e businesses coming down lately, uh, wherein you know a Flipkart has been valued down as well. Uh, they have stopped operations. Even a grofer has stopped operation in 16 cities because uh, of the cost factor. 25 to 30 percent, uh, you know, uh, additional cost is incurred for catering and delivering, you know, an e-commerce shipment to a small town. So there are a lot of challenges which comes along with, you know, uh, solving a problem. Uh, but I think it will get better with time, definitely. You know, right. uh, things right. are improving. And uh, availability is the key, uh, you know, uh, for success for the product business, I think, at the right place, at the right time, to the right people. You just picking that, I mean, there is, so there is the whole uh, digital part of it, which is, you know, great consumer acquisition, great consumer engagement. There are people investing behind it. Right. There is the whole aspect of uh, building, so to say, services and services at home and, you know, digital is helping you uh, sort of defragment that, go into the house and, uh, you know, build around that. Is, is that something you see building up? Is that uh, in this industry, is that something you guys are seeing that uh, digital will really drive the next waves of growth or will it continue to remain a focus largely from a consumer engagement standpoint or will it change the business models itself in terms of be subscription based models service based models definitely, you know uh, towards okay. that it is a, definitely it's going to be a 360 degree uh, you know uh, technology and uh, digital uh, movement would actually uh, solve from all the perspectives, not only from a product's perspective, definitely services. There are a lot many salon aggregators which are coming in the play. Uh, many home service companies are there, uh, which are growing with time when we see, you know, uh, uh, at the time when they launched and today, they have definitely grown multiple folds. Awareness is happening. People understand. Uh, we are also investing in an upcoming brand called Skia, which is a salon aggregator. So from the services point of view, from the B2C point of view as well, there is definitely a lot of growth which we see. And that's why, you know, uh, I think with all the industry veterans here uh, and all the, you know, uh, PwC and KPMG reports, what we read, which we rely on a lot, we see there's a lot of potential, but the idea is how to make it happen. Uh, and it is only possible when, you know, I think uh, uh, discussions, forum like this would make, you know, us to exchange ideas and thoughts and actually execute, you know, that's the idea. Sure, sure. So just the last question that I'll sort of pose to all of you is where do you see the next wave of growth really coming from? Where do you see the, uh, you know, uh, where do you see this business being driven from in terms of, uh, you know, whether you look at scale, whether you look at, you know, digital, whether you look at omni-channel, you've spoken about efficiencies, but where do you see, really see the next uh, stage of growth for this business uh, coming from in, in uh, some form or shape? Or take a short. So I, I think um, it's a tough question, right? <laughs> so I think there are two key trends which I can see. One is I think digital will certainly come in and it will change the behavior of cons cons consumption buying pattern. But I think it will certainly not replace sal salons. It's certainly not. It will be a hybrid model which will be in place. The split will still be a lot more brick and mortar, but it will there definitely be a shift. It's such a big industry, a 10-15% shift is also a big shift. So they start some, they, they shift I can see. The answer is, will they pure play brick and mortar, pure play digital, and will gonna survive or a hybrid model going to play? I believe a hybrid could work. Uh, that could be the answer. And second is, uh, I've talked enough, right? Efficiency is a way. People who are efficient, who have the right proposition, and can stay cost-focused will be successful over time. Understood. So you're saying through scale-up, focus on the efficiency, build the unit economics, and look at both digital as and well digital, as yes. Uh, yes, sir, hybrid, so the hybrid I, play. I want to add something here. So one, so one of the things I was going to say is that uh, growth, fundamentally, the industry has to grow, right? So, you know, the dynamics of home versus that is different. So, I think educating more of the masses, because still the number of people who go for a manicure, pedicure is not like everybody in the, you know, so society goes out for manicure, pedicures. But somebody has to figure out a way that more people aspire to get a manicure, pedicure or get a blow dry. You know, in the U.S. there are blow dry bars. You just go in get a blow dry and go and it's so common that you know people get but in the india a lot of employ in my own company i asked some of my employees you know what's a blow dry and many girls didn't necessarily know what's a blow dry because they are so focused on a technology world and they are just writing code and we are a software kind of 
group of people, right? So it's about educating. So I think the leaders who figure out a way to educate and get into the spaces and find the groups of people who don't spend the money but have to get them to be aware of these services are going to help the industry grow, in my opinion, at the end of the day. Interesting. So you're saying we're essentially at a nascent stage of industry rather than focusing on digital or non-digital or, you know, focus on building the business itself, you know, get, get a brand that is uh, focused on education and building up. Interesting. Sorry. I was saying this is uh, more like an experience-based business, you know, and uh, as you mentioned, the hybrid model. So hybrid model when we talk about is talk about an omni-channel brick and store uh, like uh, we have Saloon and Saloon is now focusing on the product selling as well. So if we have a good experience, we have the repeat customer. If we don't have the good experience, we may not have the repeat customer. So uh, for getting that repeat customer and getting the right sort of, sort of experience, we need the digital technologies, we need the social tools, we need the uh, way uh, how the we bring the customer uh, to the store or we can actually send the right promotions at the right side. You know, uh, to the customer. So this is a main gap, uh, and I think the digital companies are helping uh, to fill this gap. Uh, and uh, we, we and other companies are also working on the same model. Great. So you're saying focus on digital. It will help you scale, get the customer acquisition, get it for engagement, do the right things with the help of digital, and yeah, help yeah, you that's scale. That's required. And another thing, I think Saloon should understand how they can reduce their uh, operational cost in terms of uh, if I talk about you have a Saloon and you have a lot of electricity. You know, expenditures and you have something like a uh, lot of devices. So now the technologies are coming in where we can say, say that there is one connected technologies, one device is connected to all of the devices and it, it helps to reduce the uh, consumption, it helps to reduce uh, uh, what you call as uh, the uh, maintenance of those devices because I'm sure you spend a lot of money uh, uh, when your device is uh, out of service and you have to bring in the new device, So, but you don't know whether it's going to be out of service or not. So you have some preventive action uh, and that could be achieved very well with the uh, help of technology. Yeah. Understand. Understand. Yeah, Anurag, the one, just a closing thing on the education part, I said in our own company employees, as we are small, we are only about 130 employees, but we have a benefit where they can spend like 25,000 rupees at our customers' salons and spas. Half of them don't use the money. So it's like, you know, wonder why. I mean, it's free. You just go spend it. We pay the money. But, you know, then they, the, the, so education is a big element, I feel, or maybe the convenience part of getting it to home or whatever, uh, both. But people don't use them. Uh, the number of people who can afford versus how many of them use is still a big gap. Yeah. Driving conversion, clearly, clearly. Great. So thank, any, any views from you guys on uh, growth and what will be the... So I think that a hybrid model is definitely important for growth. Uh, it's what led to us uh, incorporating MyGlam. And the idea is, is that uh, te with technology comes convenience and that's what people use technology for. So while someone may or may not want to get stuck in traffic and go to a hotel or go to their favorite spa salon uh, uh, at any given time, the, the, the fact remains that they do need a haircut, they do need a pedicure or manicure, they do need some kind of styling services which you need to apply, as a result of which, you know, online services are, are, are fantastic because you, if you have someone coming to you who's trained by people who, you know, have, who do run brick and mortar uh, spas and salons, and they're coming with the best products for you, and they're coming to your house with all the apparatus involved, they're coming, doing the service, performing service, cleaning, leaving, and, uh, you know, everything is done over the click of a couple of... Uh, uh, buttons uh, off a phone screen, you know, that, that that's definitely value, it's convenience, and I think that that's definitely a strong part of the growth of the wellness beauty industry. Get it, get it, get it. Great, so thank you very much.